hey, I have a character. And I made the character dance. And this is a video on explaining how I did it. This explanation is a little more casual, it's just a recording of me through the thought process of trying to make this animation work, but I'll timestamp some key moments that might be useful. So I basically start by sketching out the animation on the Procreate app. And then once the animation is all sketched out, I then go back and will draw my character on the sketched out frames on another layer. Once I get all the frames, I then export them individually to my desktop. And that's where I will then assemble and composite them into an animation. So believe it or not, I used DaVinci Resolve to quote unquote animate and make uh, sprite animations. So that's what we're gonna be trying to do with the frames that we drew on Procreate, making a little dancing GIF and see how well that works. I imported those frames into a folder, and so all I have to do is just drag and drop and put them into the media pool. This goes for any type of media for DaVinci Resolve. You don't want to drag and drop a bunch on the timeline, because then it's going to combine them all into one file. Uh, I recommend putting them just in the media pool first, and then you can select them all and put them in here if need be. But we're going to be doing layers, so we'll just take at least one at a time. So I believe this is the first frame that we have as the dance. And the first thing I want to do is I want to scale this up. So let's just select one about right there. It's pretty good. And then we will take the next frame. And we noticed how there is a size difference. So if we just right click and then copy it, then right click this clip paste attributes, make sure the zoom, scale, the x and y, and the positions are all clicked, apply, and now they're the same size. And you notice how when I drew these frames, I slightly tweaked some of the movements. It's basically the same picture, I just tweaked some of the parts, hopefully to have more fluid movement in the animation. Do that, and then here's the in-between frame, and we'll do the same thing. We'll just paste the attributes because we want them along the same lines so there we go so this is where I'm kind of gonna be freelancing the idea we want the out frame to go inwards and then he goes down like that and then we'll just select this one copy it and then I'm using control V to paste but now I want them facing the other way so we'll just go to the tool simply flip that around but then we'll have to maybe move his positioning and then also we noticed another problem frames move very very slowly so this is something that i kind of wish i'd done before but we'll select all the frames right click all of them change clip duration uh frames which thankfully they have a frames option and i usually animate uh, two frames just to start off with, change, and they have all these gaps. I think I assigned a shortcut to if I hit G, it just combines them all up together. So now, they're much shorter, two frames of animation per second. See that? <laughs> there it goes! We probably don't want it that fast, but we can always tweak it. So then it's just kind of simply judging how long you want each frame to last. Maybe instead of twos, we'll animate maybe four frames. All right, so kind of tweaking around a little bit. So we got going down, switching to this side. Um, we'll take these two frames and we'll copy them. And we'll paste them on this end because we want it to be a loop. And let's try this. There we go. A little bit of emotion. I think it's a little too fast. So we'll just uh, simply, yet again, just adjust the frames. I just kind of wing it. I just, whatever kind of seems right. You could go in and try the exact frames. Like, okay, maybe I'm gonna try 16 uh, frames or maybe we're gonna try 24 frames. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's moving. 
which is cool if you want maybe something a little faster. I want a little bit of a, a slower motion, so maybe the in-between frames right here just drag out a little bit. There we go, now it's more of a rhythm. And then also what I want to do, maybe with this frame, um, we want some s uh, squash and stretch. Uncheck this mark between the zoom X and Y axis, and I believe if we bring the Y down, he kind of squishes. Now I have to change the position down a little bit, kind of eyeball it. Has a little bit of a stretch, but I kind of want the, the feet to be the same position of this frame. So I kind of just eyeball it. This is like this is like the Bob Ross of animating. He just whatever feels good. There we go. See? It's not that drastic. I'm gonna get rid of these frames. Recopy these since we made some changes. Paste them here. And then I think I I like that. I really, really like that. Alright, so the most important part, the tail. I hate animating the tail. So this is gonna be on its own layer. Uh, click these, drag these up, tail's going behind them. Small, small tail. So, scale that up, that's pretty much the size of his tail there. And the reason why I'm doing it separate is because I believe there's more frames of animation involving the tail than there is the actual movement. And if we can get a cycle going with the tail, then we can just copy and paste it through the whole animation. You see, he has control of his body when he moves, and it's more stiff pose to pose, but the tail is going to be more of a fluent movement. And I want to see if I can do that with only three different drawings of the tail. We might have to do, I'm using the left and right keys, one, two, let's animate on twos. Snap that out with S, and then one, two, it's gonna be our next frame. We'll uh, drop that down, and then uh, snap that with S, one, two, like that. Uh, snip that. Uh, delete you. I believe this is the frame that we want to use next. Now, I want to copy the attributes of this one. So, uh, paste the attributes so it's the same size. And then we can reposition where the tail will be. Yeah, yeah, that's the movement. So when his body is shift over here, the tail's over here. In the middle of shifting his body, the tail is gonna whip over. And then when he's on this side, the tail's gonna be over here. All right. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna try to export it and then see if there's any timing that I have to get down. Alright, I exported it, and here is the, the test of how the animation looks. I like it. I'm still debating if the tail maybe moves too fast, or if it has too much of an arc. I think I kind of like this movement a little bit better. It's a little slowed down, a little bit of a cha-cha-cha. Now we gotta reanimate the tail. I hid in it, so it's not too much, but if we rehide it, the whole timing of the tail is now off. And I might want to reanimate it. I think it's going to be con too confusing to try to adjust everything, so I'm just going to get rid of that and <laughs> I got to reanimate the tail. Normally, when I have frames of my character, uh, the tail is in one frame. But with this, I want that to convey the movement. So I'm. Let's do one, two, three, four. Let's try four frames of animation now and see how that looks. It's kind of better to do more because if you need to shorten everything, you can with a shortcut.
There we go. I like it. Okay, so I want to export this as a transparent uh, video, a PNG almost. If I remember correctly, it's the format is QuickTime. Codex is GoPro Cineform. And then the type is RGB 16-bit. And then that will allow us to export alpha. And then if I render to Q and render it, and to double check, we'll just bring our background in. I'll go to my files where I saved it. Bring new in. And then I want to just copy and paste these in a row so it can play long enough to see if it works. And then there we go. We've got ourselves a dancing fox. So you can apply this same thing to like a walk cycle or a run cycle. Uh, just have your frames laid out on the timeline, uh, get the timing right, export it as a transparent sequence, and then you can use those animation cycles in your project with any character that you make. I don't know, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you all laters.